I do think at school, like, they try and prepare you for life, don't they? I don't know how well they do it. Like, I remember at primary school, uh, they used to try and prepare us for life by uh, giving us assemblies every day. We'd have assembly every day, but we'd all be sat in the hall, on the floor, in rows. And then the teachers would be sat on the end of the rows on chairs because they were stronger. <laughs> And then our head teacher called Mr. Babbage would come in and he'd come in and he'd walk to the front and he'd say, good morning, everybody. And then the whole school would go, good morning, Mr. Babbage. Because they were all drunk. <laughs> and then he'd read us a story and it would always be a story about like how to make a soup out of stones. <laughs> And I think Jesus was there somewhere. <laughs> and there was always a moral, and the moral was always something like, be poor. <laughs> and then after that, he sometimes read us a letter from Rapamundi, and Rapamundi was this girl, right, we were always raising money for in India. <laughs> She would write us these letters about how dreadful her life was. And she did have an awful, awful, dreadful, dreadful, awful, 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 dreadful, dreadful, awful, dreadful, dreadful life. But then she always found time to write. <laughs> and then after that, we'd always have a collection of postage stamps for guide dogs. I don't know who these guide dogs are writing to. <laughs> And then eventually, when you've done enough of that, eventually, then you get to go, of course, to secondary school, don't you? Secondary school, and that's where you get to learn really interesting things at secondary school, isn't it? Like, you get to learn about novels in English, and um, you get to learn about uh, fingering, and... <laughs> and you get to learn about, like, proper grown-up maths, don't you? Ma or math, as they say in America, don't they? Math, math, math. But we do it more than once. <laughs> And I remember learning things like Pythagoras' theorem. Do you remember that? Pythagoras' theorem. Do you remember that? Do you remember that? Sokatoa. Do you remember that? Sokatoa. 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 It's a thing. I'm not just having a stroke. Sokatoa. Sokatoa. Sokatoa means sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. I mean, now, as an adult, looking back, it would have been nice, wouldn't it, if they spent maybe half an hour or even, even, just, like, even just like 10 minutes, really. Just, just 10 minutes. Just 10 minutes going, this is... A pension scheme. <laughs> and this is how you get a tax return. And this is how you get over a broken heart. And this is how you tell an estate agent to fuck off. So something else happened recently that I'd never thought would happen for me. I got married very recently. <laughs> uh, they changed the law. We now have equal marriage in this country. It meant I could marry my girlfriend of 17 years. <laughs> uh, thank you. I'm very happy, she's very, very lucky, and, um... <laughs> it's great, though, I'm very proud to live in a country that now has equal marriage, I think it's a wonderful thing. People went out and campaigned for my right to have an equal marriage, and for that I'm terribly proud and delighted. <laughs> Equality... <laughs> Equality within marriage... <laughs> That's a whole different parade, isn't it? Come on, don't tell me I'm the only person in this room that's ever looked at their other half and thought to themselves, I'm probably the better one in this relationship. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't say it, would you? But you, you've thought it, haven't you? <laughs> probably the team leader of this little outfit we've got going on here. <laughs> She's Dutch, my wife. She speaks brilliant, brilliant English. They're fabulous, the Dutch, when it comes to languages. So it makes it doubly funny when she gets something wrong. So we were at home a few weeks ago um, watching a programme about people in persistent vegetative comas. And, um, I know. <laughs> we don't have Netflix, you've got to watch what's on. <laughs> Literally a slave to the schedule. And, and it, it was quite upsetting, obviously, given the subject matter. And uh, at one point I turned to the wife, she's having a little cry. And I was like, oh God, awkward. I said, I said, are you all right? Are you, are you all right? She turned to me and she went, I'm, I'm not, sorry. I'm not, I'm finding this very upsetting. And I need you to promise me something after watching this documentary. And I said, I will promise you anything, my darling. What is it you need me to promise you? I need you to promise me 
that if you truly love me, you will switch me off <laughs> if I ever become a vegetarian. <laughs> Obviously, I made that promise. I <laughs> can't have the poor cow suffering, can we? First mention of not Rose, she is out of here. Ah, uh, I know a lot of you are now looking at me going, shit, look at his hair. Now. <laughs> now. <laughs> I am in the mid stage of growing an afro. <laughs> I'm well aware that this is the shit stage. <laughs> On. This alone gives people license to shout out shit to me in the street. <laughs> so for your information, I know what year it is. Mm. <laughs> I have never been near a car wash. <laughs> and who the fuck is Shaft? <laughs> I walk down the road, Shaft, Shaft! I look down, my cock is hanging out. <laughs> oh yes, ladies, some stereotypes I can live with. <laughs> Big cock. <laughs> Very happy to be here. Uh, look around the room, so many sinners sitting here amongst us tonight. Oh yes, there are. There's a man sitting right in my eye line, sitting right over there, look at him. Openly, openly wearing glasses. <laughs> Have you found Jesus? <laughs> the Lord gave you vision at a limited rate. You defy him by wanting to see more. Who do you think you are? Remove your glasses, see what is really here. <laughs> oh, look at this pretty lady, don't fight it. I can tell by your eyes that you want me. Hmm? <laughs> oh, fuck it, I can't keep it up. Uh, <laughs> so the joke. <laughs> I've never left the country. Good evening, folks. Very, very, very pleased to be here tonight. I want to tell you a bit about myself, because I've started off quite aggressive, so I'll pull back, right? Um, my parents arrived in London in the 60s. And London in the 60s was very, very similar to um, Australia now. <laughs> no real diversity, right? I remember my first day at primary school, I ran into the classroom, I ran straight back home, and I went, Mum, Mum, apparently there's a black boy in my class. <laughs> find him anywhere. <laughs> so you young people, you're very, very lucky, right? Young people. How old are you, son? Right there, you. 16? What year were you born? Uh, 91. 1991. Did you hear that noise? <laughs> That's called jealousy. <laughs> there are people in this room with underpants and socks older than you. <laughs> Where are you from, child? Where are you from? London. London, big place. Scale it down. I'm not driving a mini car. <laughs> Let's work together. <laughs> Kilburn, North London, yeah. South London, representing. <laughs> what do you do for a living? I'm a soldier. A soldier? Oh. Thank you, God. I expect you could give me a good drilling, couldn't you? Yeah, I could. What particular barracks are you from? Uh, I'm based in Germany. Are you? Yeah. What sort of uniform do you have? <laughs> it's, very, it's very nice, you like it. A nice one, with a green helmet? Yes. <laughs> right. And you're obviously romantic because you're engaged there. How long have you been engaged? Uh, six months. Six months. And what kind of things do you do to keep the romance alive while you're away in Germany with the lads? 
you write? Uh, yeah, a bit, yeah. We write. Right. Do you send flowers? Not very often, no. No. Anything else? You take her out now, then? You take her out. Yeah. Very, very encouraging. Lovely teeth. Yeah, very nice teeth. OK, well, yeah, I'm very happy with you, Nick. Would we like to go down and sit yes, someone else could. on the other side? Shall I go up the back? <laughs> Not unless you've got a strap on with you. <laughs> right. right. See who you can find. Um, oh. Right, someone there in shorts. No, the man next to him, actually. OK. The man there. You... What's your name? Lee. Lee. Would you like to win some vintage champagne, Lee? Wine. Round of applause for Lee, please. Oh. Come over here, Lee. Like chalk and cheese. <laughs> Hello, you're quite big for your size, aren't you? I'm, I'm not too bad. <laughs> Nice smile as well. Just let your arms hang loosely by the side. Now, I see there's a wedding ring there. Does that mean you're married? It certainly does. Who did you marry? Uh, some unfortunate woman. <laughs> is she here with you this evening? She isn't, I'm afraid, no. No, you've slipped out by yourself. I've slipped out. <laughs> Times I've said that. <laughs> so, Lee, what do you do for a living? I'm a sailor. You're not. <laughs> It's uncanny, isn't it, Hugh? <laughs> and unnatural. Uh, HMS what in particular? Uh, you on a boat? Uh, not at the moment. You're land-based. I am, yes. But I am a submariner. A submariner? And, uh, as they say, submariners do it deeper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that champagne is practically yours. Just go forward three places. Ready, Nick? One, two, three. OK. Um, nurse girl, could I have the psychological profile now, please? This is... Uh, <laughs> did you see something awful, then? How oh, awful. Would you like to take Lee over that side? Yes. Nick, you come over this side. I want you to look up at the screen. I'm going to show you three images, and I'd like you to tell me which one you'd rather spend the evening with. Excuse me, Mr Jelly. Would you rather spend the evening with number one? A teddy bear. Number two, Tom Cruise. Or number three, a large courgette. Which one are you going to go for? I'll go for teddy bear. You're going for the teddy bear. You're going to play safe. Let your arms hang loosely by the side. That's right. <laughs> Going over here now to the Navy, where the food is obviously a lot nicer. Excuse me, Dale. <laughs> Similar arrangement for you, Lee. Would you rather spend the evening with number one? A hot water bottle. Number two? Jude Law. No stains on the upholstery, please. Or number three? A large sprig of purple-headed broccoli. What's it to be? The purple head wins all the time. It does? Excellent. <laughs> Would you like to now join me back in the middle? Lee and Nick, come over here. Some straightforward questions now. Just to find out a bit more about you. What's your favourite aftershave? I, I don't wear aftershave. You don't? Deodorant? Sure. <laughs> Let's have a little snip. Oh, you do smell quite fresh, Gail. Would you like to...? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, very very nice. 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 Oh, no, nothing musty there at all. What's your favourite aftershave, Lee? It's brute for me, Julian. Is it brute? <laughs> Any on this evening? Uh, just a touch. Oh, that's lovely. Just a faint aroma there. Would you wait, wait until you're asked, please? <laughs> and finally, what's your favourite position, Nick? Doggy. Doggy star. <laughs> What sort of dog do you have? <laughs> Your favourite position? Reverse cowboy. Reverse cowboy. <laughs> 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 laughing at your own jokes there. <laughs> it's like you're on stage with Billy Connolly. <laughs> now then. Right, that's it, Nurse Gale. Could I have the rubber glove now, please? <laughs> For medical reasons, I'm obliged to conduct an internal examination. <laughs> Thank you very much. Could I have the swabs at once? Here they come. All sterilised, open wide. Oh, I say. <laughs> Lots of room in there, isn't there? <laughs> a 
to waste. <laughs> and Lee, there we are. Perfect. Get those under the microscope at once. Take Lee over to his screen. Nick, come over here. Let's see the results of your swab test first, please. OK, nothing to worry about there. Just a couple of common or garden microbes. It's almost as if someone just filmed a lava lamp. <laughs> Sailor's results, please. <laughs> Not very nice, is it? Didn't waste your evening, obviously. I can tell you what your spirit animal is, Joe. It's a walrus. Well, what do I do with this information, Janet? <laughs> this is useless. And she said, walrus will talk to you and tell you to do things and you should listen to that inner voice, to that inner walrus. I shouldn't listen to my inner voice, because it is normally things like, kick that toddler, just a stream. <laughs> unacceptable things. But she kept saying, listen to the voice, and then she said, I do normally charge for this service. It is normally 30 pounds, but as we're at a party, I do it for half price, I do it for 15. I was like, walrus says you can piss off. <laughs> But um, the next day I found this walrus ring online by chance, after searching four hours for one. <laughs> and since I've been wearing it, friends of mine think that it has changed me. They think that I go into myself at social occasions and it's me going, what did you say, walrus? <laughs> Could you possibly kill another prostitute? You know, silly things. <laughs> but I, I've noticed that walrus comes out with real jobs worths. I don't know if you have this in London. In Birmingham, we have an app where you can pay for parking on the app and you don't have to buy a ticket. I tried it for the first time. You put a location code in, put the code in, went into a nearby coffee shop, had just got my coffee, and a parking enforcement officer was next to my car. That's what they called themselves, with his little computer with a pen on a string in case I drop it, dickhead. <laughs> I was putting my details in. So I went out to him, I said, I've paid for parking. Look, I've got a receipt on my phone. It was eight minutes ago. And he looked at it and he went, no. This location code is for Leeds. And I said, well, I've clearly just made a mistake, haven't I? And he went, well, I don't know that, do I? I was like, yes, you do. <laughs> because if I'm lying, then what you're suggesting I've done is parked in Leeds <laughs> and then driven 120 miles in eight minutes. That's what you're suggesting I've done. <laughs> I've put it into the computer now. You'll have to complain at the office. It's only five minutes down the road. Actually, it's about three seconds in my hypercar. <laughs> Got to the office, met Sweaty Sharon. Oh, my God. It was, it was so hot in that office. She looked like a bit of wet scrambled egg in a chair, just... <laughs> so annoyed with life. And she had a thick Brummie accent as well. She was talking to somebody in the back office when I went in. She was going, is that Yao making me a cup of toast, Dave? And then she looked at me and went, the day I hear Steve making me a cup of tea is the day I hear a rocking horse do a plop. <laughs> That's the weirdest imagery I've ever heard, <laughs> for a start. And I explained the situation to her, gave her the phone and everything. And she looked at the phone, looked at her computer, back at the phone, and she went, this says Leeds. <laughs> I know, Sharon, I put the wrong code in. Well, you'll have to complain at the Leeds office. <laughs> I've not been in Leeds, Sharon. <laughs> she looked again and she's like, but how did you get here so quickly? <laughs> you would have had to break the speed limit. I would have had to break the speed of sound, Sharon. <laughs> so annoyed, so annoyed. I said, is there anyone else I can talk to about this? She said, you could speak to Steve over there. I decided not to speak to Steve for a number of reasons. The main one being, he was trying to eat a yoghurt with a pen lid. I just didn't feel <laughs> like he was competent. You get a sense sometimes, don't you? So in the end, I just had to leave, kept the fine, paid it, still got it to this day. And after I'd left, Walrus was like, you idiot. You could have done anything in there. You could have killed her. <laughs> the perfect alibi. Where were you when the murder happened? <laughs> I took my two goddaughters, share yeah, to the leisure centre to go swimming. No one told me they'd invented a wave machine. Did you know about this? <laughs> Leisure centre, minding my own business. 
all of a sudden I hear, it's getting choppy. And then I couldn't kick because my locker key was round my weak leg. Oh, I thought someone had pulled the plug out. Help! 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 No! This lifeguard runs over with a float. Do you remember those white floats you used to get at school? Do you remember the texture of them? <laughs> and there was a bite out of them, didn't they? Bite. <laughs> How far away from land have you floated that you're that hungry? It's been a long time since I've made a woman make that noise. <laughs> oh, it's Melanie Sykes! Hello, Mel! Oh, thanks for laughing. That's what friends are for. Hope you brought your tenor, lady. <laughs> <laughs> How unfit am I? You see me sweating. I don't mind getting the underarm bits, it's when you get the W's. You've been sitting down and you get up and they're underlined. You're like, what? <laughs> you see, Gok was meant to help me with my outfit. You know Gok Wan? Do you like Gok? Yeah. I, like, I love Gok. I love Gok. He's great. You know, people will say, when are you and Gok going to get together? When are you and Gok going to get together? <laughs> we can't. We can't. Because if we have kids, they'll be wankers. <laughs> you know... Let's face it, they're going to get bullied at school anyway. Do you know what I mean? Let's not <laughs> over <-egg> the pudding. <laughs> Wanka, here, sir. <laughs> With a handbag. 